Today's video is on a guy who, other than having a hairstyle like a BTS member, is known for his immense pace. Not. People only know him since he competed in the 2020 Formula 2 Championship, where he finished a pretty measly 22nd, only ahead of robotic Rag Hunnison, aka Gilhermes Simon. But to be fair to him, he was driving for Trident, which as we've seen can put any driver at the back of the grid, no matter their skill. This is also the guy who got to test in the 2020 F1 Young Drivers test for Alpha Tauri alongside his best friend, Yuki Tsunoda, which surprised a lot of people, after his Formula 2 season at least. But it's difficult to judge a driver when they're driving for a bad team, so it is Marino Sato as bad as we think. Marino Sato was born on the 12th of May 1999, and as my best friend Wikipedia says, it is very important that he is not related to former F1 driver Takuma Sato. I mean, okay, is that really worthy of the second line on his page? He enjoyed karting from a young age, and at a young age was also when he met his lifelong best friend Yuki Tsunoda, of whom they grew up together. Marino started karting professionally aged 12 in Asia, but also did plenty of karting in Europe alongside that. Highlights of his career in the Lawnmower GT3, that really wasn't funny, why did I say that? Include finishing as a runner up in the 2012 Asia Pacific Karting Championship, and he had some alright results in the CIK European Karting Championship and the South Garda Winter Cup. But other than the Asia Pacific results, nothing yet screamed a Formula 1 star in the making. In 2015, which did you know was precisely one year after 2014, he'd make his car racing debut in Europe racing in the Italian Formula 4 Championship for Vincenzo Sospiri Racing alongside Mauricio Baez, who isn't that bad a driver, so how would he do? He was consistently in the points most of the season, but he did have quite a few races nowhere near the points. But picking up a second place at the Adria circuit, he finished 10th in the championship, ahead of his teammates, F3 podium finisher Alex Peroni and Lando Norris. I mean, Norris only competed in half the season, but still. After this alright season, he'd stay again in the series for 2016, at the same team, but this time partnering current Porsche factory driver Jaden Conright. He did score points, but not as many as last season, being out of the points for a substantial amount of the season. However, he had a surprise performance at Imola, where he was in the points for race 1 and 2, and then won race 3. But all of this only got him to 18th in the championship that year. He did miss two races, but championship winner Marcus Siebert also missed two races. So that's an excuse gone like Sean Galal's excuse for staying in Formula 2 for five years. The pity ha pity this perfectly innocent Monaco barrier is now Sean Jalayal's property. After this reasonably average campaign in Formula 4, he then step up to the FIA Formula 3 European Championship for 2017, driving for Motor Park alongside Joel Eriksson, Kevin Andres, and then a mixture of Yuri Vips, David Beckman, and Petru Florescu coming in at some points. But his lovely motorpark team made him drive a 2014 car for the season, which is only not alright since everyone else was driving much newer cars. Some of them were brand new that year even. So it wasn't particularly fair. I mean, although Harrison knew he finished 11th in the championship in an even older car, but that's not the point. But this season was pretty rubbish. There were 30 races in the season, Yes, 30. But how many points did he score? Bear in mind that champion Lando Norris scored 440 points. But how many did Sato score? One. He then went to compete in the Macau Grand Prix, a prestigious race. Dan ticked him second home in a place holding the relics of Sophia Flush, where he got 14th place, ahead of drivers like Mick Schumacher, Tadasuki Makino, Jehan Dovala, and Alex Pelot. But that wouldn't matter because he crashed out in the main race. So after a disappointing 19th in the championship this year, Marino stayed with Motor Park in the series for next year, partnering Yuri Vips, Sir Wynalot, Jonathan Aberdeen, Fabio Scherer and Sebastian Fernandez. How many drivers do you need? And fun fact, according to the totally reliable source of Wikipedia, Marino Sato suddenly changed his nationality to San Marino Sato for a year. This season was arguably better, but on paper it would have been even harder for him, since he was still in a 2014 car while some drivers were now in a 2018 car. So now only Jehan Dorivala and Emeo Vedyanathan were in older cars. He managed to score 31.5 points, which I guess is better for what car he was in. 
So he was 16th in the championship, ahead of Cynthia Flush. I know that wasn't funny. But behind drivers like Ferdinand Zvonimir, Maria Balthus, Keith Michael Otto Antel, Bonham Leonard von Habsburg Lothringen, aka Ferdinand Habsburg. He then had another crack at the Macau Grand Prix in 2018. And guess what happened? Well, I obviously can't tell if you guessed it right. But the answer is, he crashed out of the race. For 2019, he'd moved to the slightly less prestigious Euroformula Open Championship, alongside a mixture of Dennis Hauger, Liam Lawson, Cameron Daz, Nicholas Crutton, Uline Andis, Toshiki Oyu, and Sato's best mate Yuki Tsunoda. Motorpark couldn't manage to keep a single driver full-time, which is why there were so many of them. Sato was absolutely dominant in the series. Starting the season off in poor Ricard, aka second worst track in Europe, with a win in a fifth place, followed by a podium and more points at the prestigious, sort of, Po Grand Prix, a win in second place at Hockenheim, and then six wins in a row in the next three races, which is not bad. He then missed the Silverstone round, but was back for the final two rounds, wrapping up the title in Catalonia, and then a win in Monza. He ended up beating runner-up Liam Lawson by 128 points, and even if Lawson missed one race more than him, if Lawson took pole and won both races in Red Bull Ring, he still wouldn't be close to Sato, so a truly dominant drive from him. So this looked like Marino had found his talent, and this talent would come in handy, if it was real and not bought off eBay, which is what it looks like since it mysteriously disappeared in 2020, because Arjun Miney had just left Campos mid-season in Formula 2, so someone had to replace him for that remainder of the season, and that person would be the GOAT, the man the driver with a BTS trim, Marino Sato. It wasn't an enormously successful campaign, with zero points, but he did have a best finish of 11th, which isn't bad for a first time in an F2 car. It also meant he was put ahead of Tatiana Calderon in the standings, who competed every race. But only a best finish of 13th for her, which is which I guess is better than Ragnarsson's Brazilian cousin. Then for 2020, he was announced as Trident's second driver, partnering the driver who will always go to the limit of racing, the next Michael Schumacher, perhaps one of motorsport's best drivers today. Roy Nassani. So the 2020 season was difficult for Sato, mainly because he was with a team which is basically the F2 equivalent of Andrea Moda, and you can see how much that affected him, since when he was in Campos in 2019, having never driven a car anywhere near that level of speed, so with no experience at all, he had an average finish around 3 positions higher than in 2020, where he had an average finish position of around 16th. And it can't be the case that after a year of experience, Sato is lower down than his F2 debut because of talent. It's clearly the car. But unfortunately, I don't see other teams seeing that in the future. So I don't think Sato will be getting into a better team than Trident very soon in F2. He finished the season off with one point in Mugello, which to be fair, he did have really strong pace that weekend, and getting a trident into the points is not particularly easy. And also the fact of how crazily competitive the 2020 grid is, well. So the competition wasn't easy. It also didn't help with his future Michael Schumacher teammate taking him out. But otherwise, yes, he did really struggle, getting close to the points on many occasions, but otherwise not really. And he finished the season in 22nd place, quite a way behind his best friend Yuki in 3rd. But hey, I'm sure Yuki waved to him while slapping him. But then it all changed when he was given a Formula 1 young driver's test run with Alpha Tauri, alongside his best friend. You know, why am I saying this? You're probably bored of me by now. Let's hand over to my good friend Karem. Thank you, Dan, for this opportunity. I'm sure you're all very familiar with me as I have a YouTube channel I made in 2015 with a total sub count of 9. Anyways, let's get straight into the issue at hand. As you all probably know, for this year's Young Drivers Test, many promising drivers were given a go in an F1 car, such drivers like Robert Schwartzman, Callum Ayla, Yuki Tsunoda, Yuki Tsunoda's best friend, and... Wait, what? Fernando Alonso. Ah, well I guess age is just a number. FBI, open up! But how did Sato do against this field of promising talent? Well, it wasn't a dazzling performance, far from it. His compatriot came P4 in the end with a time of 137.557, while Sato finished roughly a second behind with a time of 138.485. Although, we should keep in mind that Yuki has had a lot more track time with the team compared to our main man Sato, and they were likely running different programs from each other. But while he is a second off of arguably his biggest rival, he wasn't too far off Schwartzman, Joe, Buemi, or even his fellow F2 competitor Jack Aitken. In fact, he even beat the time set by the likes of Schumacher and Nissani. But again, 
Schwartzman is driving the tractor that is the Ferrari, so it's not the biggest accomplishment, but it's still something. How did the team react to his performance, though? Well, Franzos definitely had some interesting things to say. We are pleased to have Marino Zato on board for the test because he did our lead job throughout the season in Formula 2 this year, so he deserves a run in Formula 1. We are convinced he can do a good job as he is a skilled driver. The plan for the test is simply, getting him to do as many laps as possible to give him a good feeling for a Formula 1 car. This test will be useful, both for us and for Marino and we will do our best to help him understand how a Formula 1 team operates in all its different aspects. Now I'm not an expert, I'm just your normal Formula fan, but I don't think that scoring a singular point over the whole season is a solid job. Regardless of his performances over his career, he's had glimpses of potential like how he won the Euro Formula Open Championship against the likes of Liam Lawson, Lucas Dunner, and Yuki Tsunoda, and even beat his closest rival by roughly 120 points. But we should also mention that he never once retired and missed two rounds while his other competitors retired on multiple occasions and also missed races. So it's kinda like Lord Mahavir clinching the Boss GP title. He won the title, sure, but it will always be played with ifs and buts. What if Liam and Yuki didn't miss those rounds, or what if Sato retired on multiple occasions like his rivals? But in conclusion, is Takuma- I mean, Marino Sato, 2019 Euro Formula Open Champion and beloved friend of Yuki Tsunoda, as bad as we think he is? In my opinion, no. Not exactly. He's showed that he at least has a tiny bit of skill, but other than that, his record isn't really that promising. In everything else he's competed in, he hasn't managed to finish higher than 10th place in terms of the driver's championship. Maybe he'll succeed in a different category, or maybe he's just an untalented driver. We'll never really know, because this is just a theory. A motorsport theory. But that's all for me for now. You're welcome, Daniel. I had to spare a lot of time for my very busy schedule. In all seriousness though, thank you for this opportunity, I really do appreciate it. Thank you Karem. I think that Marino Sato isn't necessarily a Formula 1 talent, but and I don't see him in Formula 1 soon unless his F2 performance picks up a lot, although he hasn't signed a new contract yet, so who knows if he'll even still be in F2 next year. But I do think he is not as bad as we think. He was driving slightly unfair machinery for most of his career, and when he wasn't, aka Euro Formula Open, he won the championship. So perhaps he isn't that bad. Thank you for watching this video, and huge thanks to Karem for coming on. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel since it would really help me out. But otherwise, I'm Daniel, have a nice day.